let's set it up this way. For anybody that just saw highlights on Saturday, i.e. me, I got to say, this is the first time in my life I did not set the Ohio State game as my primary primary game. You know, I've drifted away from the 49 to three games against Maryland in the third quarter, that sort of thing. But because of what I do here, I thought a lot of other priorities out there. I should set my four screens on four other games. So I never caught up with Ohio State football and this uh, Arkansas State game. But the one storyline that seemed to permeate across college football was Marvin Harrison, Marvin Harrison, Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, so your thoughts about his performance? Well, he was outstanding, and now he started three games, and in two of them he has three touchdown catches. So he became just the second player in Ohio State history to have multiple games with three touchdown catches. The other one was some piker by the name of Joey Galloway, who only played about 15 years in the NFL. So, um, yeah, he's in pretty elite company. The school record is four in one game. And I just wonder if at some point this season we see Kevin, uh, Emeka, Buka, Jackson Smith, the Jigba, or Marvin Harrison uh, take that one down or at least tie it. I don't know that anybody's going to get five in a game. That, that seems like a lot. But uh, C.J. Stroud, was on top of his game throwing the ball. Arkansas State didn't provide a lot of uh, resistance. Ohio State had eight plays of 30 yards or more, and seven of those, I believe, were pass plays. They only had one really long run in the game. And so a lot of focus on the passing game. Are those plays going to be there when they get in and play against uh, the likes of Wisconsin and Iowa and some of these other teams in the coming weeks? They may not be. But uh, you got to like the trajectory that Marvin Harrison Jr. is on right now. And uh, certainly I think it can only help if if they do, in fact, get Jackson Smith the Jigba back from his hamstring injury, which it sounds like he may try and play this week against Toledo. So um, a lot to like about what uh, Harrison was able to do in the opening game. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just see what, uh, what direction it takes, but uh, his career as a starter is off to a blazing start. No doubt about it. Yeah. The fact that uh, Marvin Harrison has been able to do it in two out of three games is, is very impressive. And yeah, I think that the skeptic can say, well, the deck has been cleared with no Julian Fleming with no Jackson Smith and Jigba, but Steve is right that, you know, I, there could be that one game where somebody gets out there and has a Noah Brown type of game and four touchdowns, and you know we might not even think twice about it. I mean, I mean, honestly, Marvin Harrison Jr. probably should have had four touchdowns in the game because he had the one where he went in and you know wasn't necessarily it was ruled incomplete, but you know did he break the plane? Did he, you know did he have control? I mean, a catch is not a catch these days. We don't know what what is a catch, but. Uh, the fact is, is that the passing game is 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 alive and well, and and then you know Ohio State's offense was able to kind of do what it wanted. I mean, yeah, sure, there were three, four drives where the play calling didn't necessarily, <clears throat> excuse me, lead the Buckeyes to success. You know, a couple times where you know runs got bottled up, but you know you have to like where things are going, especially coming out of the Notre Dame game of where it was much more of a a run focused type of game once Ohio State started having some offensive success. Against Arkansas State, they were able to do a lot more there. And then, you know, we obviously have Toledo coming up and then the start of conference play. So, you know, I, I, I walk away from that game. And you know, honestly, as we got onto the show, I had to kind of do a little bit of a mental rewind to remember the game because it feels like it was six weeks ago, uh, just as, you know, as, as, as the weeks seem to get longer and longer. But, you know, you know I, there's still enough going wrong that the coaches have plenty of things to focus on and, and coach their players up. But, you know, Ohio state is just dealing with first world issues while teams like Texas A&M and others are uh, trying to figure out how to explain losses to their fan bases. Yeah. One offensive touchdown against Appalachian state in the first four minutes of the game. And then scoring again is not a good thing. We need uh, a, we need a four team tournament with Wisconsin, Iowa, Notre Dame, and Texas A&M, uh, you know, that would be uh, one for the defensive, uh, the, the fans of defensive football could just really cinch in, get their Fritos and their, their Bud Light ready and just just enjoy, you know, what feeble offensive football really looks like. 
Well, if offensive ineptitude is the the prize of that four team tournament, regardless of the three team struggles there, Iowa has that hands. To, you know, it's it's not even. You know, they're 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 leading the nation in total offense, meaning they're they're in the basement by like eighty yards per game. It's not even close. Just crazy how bad they are.